Are y'all still here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Verse 16. If any believing woman mm -hmm. or believing man has relatives or persons in the household who are widows, let him relieve them. Let the church not be burdened with them so that the church may be free to assist those who are truly widows, those who are all alone and are dependent. Amen. So, watch this. God wants to bless our church in such a manner that the people in the church are so abundantly blessed that the church doesn't even get the appeal to deal with certain things because y'all just so blessed you take care of it. All right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right on. What happens? Folks get mad and quit the church. Uh -huh. What do they say? That church don't care nothing about nobody. They don't care nothing about widows and orphans. Yeah. They don't care nothing about the, that. The, the, like as though they that are speaking are not the church. Uh huh. He said, "I'm going to bless you. Wow. So you can take care of mom and daddy and them. Ain't to them if necessary." See, folks said cousins, and they I tell you what, I tithe. Go down there and talk to my pastor. Go down there and talk, talk to him. He'll bless you. He'll help you. He'll get you a bus token. He'll do this. Why don't you do it? Amen. Y'all think I'm meddling, but I'm teaching you how to prosper. Amen. You get mad because apostles say, no, you know, we can't do that. We, we sure we, we can't do it. Or for whatever reason, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Get mad and quit the church. Right. <laughs> Hop to the next church. Right. Talk about apostle. Right. Because they don't care nothing about nobody. And that ain't true. Right. Not my dad. But for whatever reason, they didn't help Pookie them. Right. <laughs> you should have helped Pookie them. Um, right. Nah. Right. <laughs> This is a part of your prosperity. Amen. <laughs> Taking care of the household of faith. Pookie ain't saved yet. And you know, we could win him to the Lord if the apostle would just act right and just give him the bus token. I know he smoke crack. I know he steal. I know he do it. But we need to show some love. Why don't you show some love? Right. That's right. You find it crack happen. <laughs> See, most of the time when folks be sending folks like that to the church, everybody in the whole family to quit helping. Come on, Pukio that's Pukio right, that's right. Because Pookie will wall you out. Yeah. Now you gonna send it to the man of God. They got the power, right? You know, and they also got the money because we, you know, we tithe and this stuff, and they ought to be, you know, doing this. <laughs> I should be nice and not metal, right? Wow. You're doing good. Well, you got it. Wow. I like to come back to churches. And... <laughs> <laughs> Let me share one more with you and then we'll stop. One more principle for prosperity. Did you get that? The household of faith. Number three. Number four, work in the church. I know this don't sound deep, it don't sound spiritual, but it's a part of your prosperity. Yes, it is. God looks at your attitude when you do this. Work in the church, sowing time and personal energy. Now watch this. Just because you give to the ministry doesn't mean that you are excluded from serving. Now watch this. When God opens up the windows of heaven, pours out revelation to you of favor and earthly blessing, and opens up the way, I'm not going to look at anybody because you may, because I'm speaking hypothetically, and you may think I'm prophesying, and you know, so, so I'm not going to. Well, I'm just speaking <laughs> hypothetically. <laughs> God opens the window of heaven for you. You can sing, right? And God gives you stuff, and, and, and the anointing of God comes on you. And He opens up the windows of heaven and gives favor and earthly blessing, and opens up doors for you for contracts and all of that kind of stuff. And then you become what we call. A diva. Okay. Okay, Franklin. Wow. And you go to 100 fold Messianic Assembly. And you got some money now. Okay. And you blessed now. All oh, your family, everybody rolling right. I mean, you know, this is, this is all. You know, you know, bless the apostle. You, you know, everything. But but now you the diva. 
I don't know what they call the man when he when he get to that place. The, the, man. the man. Okay. Well, 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 so so you got the picture. Got the picture. Right, right, right. You have come to a place of important. Now you are doctor. So and so. I mean, MD doctor. Right. And you are an attorney now. And God is God has just blessed you. I mean, you was too poor to pay attention when you came in. And God has blessed you. I mean, you blessed. You are the man. You are the diva. And God has blessed you. And now the pastor says, we need five people to clean the church. Wow. We, we, we need to have operations sparkle. We need, we, we're going to do this thing. We, we're gonna, we're gonna do, we, we need now. some manual labor in the church. But now you are so blessed and you are in a whole nother level. You are in a whole nother place now in life because the Lord has blessed you. And that is beneath you to do that kind of labor for the Lord. Ooh. Something wrong with that picture. Yeah. What? You, you just sealed the door shut on the open window of heaven. Wow. With that attitude. Okay. But you tithe and you give it. Pastor, well, what kind of car? What is that? He, you got it. Man, you got it. Right. But he needs somebody to put their hand to something in the work of the Lord. And you too, you, you, you uh -huh. need to do that. Yeah. Right. Let me show you some scripture real quick and we're going to close with this because I don't want y'all mad at me. But I'm just a delivery boy. Just tell it. Tell it. Just tell it. Work in the church, sowing time and personal energy just because you give to the ministry doesn't mean you're excluded from serving. In the book of Nehemiah, we will consider a number of verses which point out a number of high positioned individuals Come on, and their families serving in the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. We're going to look at several verses real quick. I'm going to try to do it without comment so we can get it done. Verse 1. Then Eliashib, the high priest, the high priest, okay. rose up with his brethren, the priests, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated and set up the door. Now what the high priest doing building the gate? Mm-hmm. Well, don't you know you're a high priest? You're supposed to, everybody else is supposed to be doing that. Wow. But the high priest rose up. Yes. With his brethren, the priests, and built the sheep gate. They, they consecrated and set up his doors. They consecrated even to the tower of Han Hanamia, or the hundred, as far as the tower of Hananel. Verse 8. Next to them repaired Uziel, son of Harhiah, one of the goldsmiths. All right. 